Greetings, welcome to the workshop. And uh, in here today, what we're going to look at is uh, the HP 1980B oscilloscope, uh, which is an oscilloscope from around about the uh, early mid 80s. And uh, this item would have set you back around about 18,000 US dollars um, around that time, which uh, to give you some, some idea, that's about uh, $40,000 in today's money. And uh, just to give you an idea, just to see what uh, what was available in those days in oscilloscopes, first of all, uh, there's the wonderful noise that you get from switching it on. Almost sounds like it's going to take off. Beautiful. And uh, also you're going to be able to see how quickly it boots up, which uh, unlike today's oscilloscopes, uh, is pretty quick. And there we go, we have a trace already in a few seconds. Okay, so uh, this is the scope after we've uh, switched it on. Uh, it's actually remembered the uh, same settings that I had when I had it switched off originally. So, uh, first of all, um, I'm going to switch it to the factory uh, reset, uh, where we can go into the option, press reset, and miraculously it goes into the predefined uh, factory defaults. And uh, this is the scope, you see, this is actually a four channel version, it's got the additional uh, two channels in here and uh, so there's a total of, uh, of four, four channels. Um, you could also replace this with uh, a, a gated uh, counter timer uh, a plug-in and uh, so you don't have two channels in that uh, when you have that uh, set up. Now uh, the basic setup here is that uh, there is only one knob as you can see here and uh, so at first thought you think this is going to be a right old pain to configure because sure enough when you want to change anything, for example let's say I want to change uh, the volts per division, I have to press that and then I can go in and change it. And you'll also notice that it changes it at a very fine resolution which is um, not that useful really so uh, you can press this button here and it'll go up in a in a rather more coarse coarsely grained uh, increment and decrement um, the other thing to note it doesn't actually go up in a standard 125 sequence uh, this actually goes up in its own sort of uh, little way so it's um, it's so for instance here we have 100 uh, down to 80 70 60 50 40 20 15 and 10 so um, a little bit fiddly but yeah, to be fair you do get used to it and um, I can I can uh, I can deal with it quite happy to do that um, it goes down you see this it goes down to uh, 2 millivolts per division there's no uh, times 10 uh, correction on here at, um, at the moment the probes I'm going to use uh, don't have any read back so uh, there'll be no uh, correction on the display for, for the 10 times uh, on there and um, I'm going to switch it uh, back up to two volts per division. There we go. Managed to over go over as well. So you might think this is a bit frustrating, but actually I found that I've, I've got rather used to it, and uh, I quite quite like using it uh, in this way. You can also see it's a little bit like a, a Christmas tree uh, with regards to all the the lights on here. Um, so each time you press something, there's a couple of them don't work. Um, this alt light doesn't work for example and there's one over here in the trigger section I believe doesn't work either so one day I'll take it apart and we'll see if we can fix it. So the other thing you'll notice is that it's, the display is really flickery. Now the reason for that is is that I don't know if it's just this unit here whether this was a, a common feature in quotes of uh, the, the 1980B oscilloscope but uh, if I switch off the uh, counter generator you'll see it's rock solid very nice display quite happy with that thank you very much uh, but equally uh, quite nice to have have it on sometimes so you can actually see what all your settings are so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set this up and we'll uh, we'll run a few uh, a few waveforms through it so I've put in a one volt peak to peak sine wave at one kilohertz into the unit right now and a uh, nice little function uh, on this scope, um, which probably back in the day was was really very cool, was, was you could press the uh, the auto scope, which uh, is a way of auto setting up uh, the scope. And uh, miraculously, it actually worked. And uh, it doesn't always seem to work. Sometimes there's some, there's a probe is picking uh, up some uh, 
signal uh, it doesn't always work perfectly uh, but as you can see that's that's really rather nice but you'll also notice that as I mentioned earlier on you, you, you get some uh, interesting uh, settings uh, to do with your time base. So for some reason this is 180 microseconds per division and uh, equally on the vertical it's uh, 360 millivolts per division. So if you want to change that you can of course do it and um, you do this by for the time base pressing the uh, seconds per division and then, then reverting back to your uh, single knob so let's put it at say uh, 200 microseconds per division and then volts per division well let's see if we can set that up to uh, I don't know, let's go for 200 millivolts per division. See, it's in fine now, so I've got to switch it in. There we go, 200 millivolts per division. So that's all very nice, very good. And uh, of course, uh, we can have a look at the trigger. The trigger's an interesting thing. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to move the uh, this this out of the way, and actually I'm just going to reduce the uh, the size of it. So I've got 500 uh, millivolts per division. Shift it out of the way. I'm going to show you something with the trigger. This is an interesting little thing, which is still taking me a little bit uh, of getting used to. So, if I press the uh, the trigger level on here, I can adjust it. When I adjust it, you'll see there's an additional trace automatically shows up. And what this is doing actually is it's using the middle graticule here. That it's a copy of the of the trigger in signal, which happens to be our channel one, which is what we have up here, which is why it's, it's a duplicate, almost a duplicate looks like. Uh, but it's it's actually telling you that on this middle graticule here, that's actually where it's triggering. So a little bit off-putting at first, and uh, it certainly took me a little bit of uh, getting used to. And again, we can we can shift it slightly. I have noticed there's some interesting drift on this scope. Actually, if you leave it on for about I don't know um, an hour or so, it moves about probably about one um, of the smaller graticule measures. Um, off to the right, so perhaps a little bit less than that, but it's enough to notice anyway. So, uh, and I'll show you why uh, in a moment. But yeah, that's um, that's one of the things. And again, you see the problem was is that I forgot to switch the trigger level. So, though I was about to change the trigger level again, I'm actually switching the uh, horizontal position. So, switch the trigger level on. There you go, and there you get the two the two signals. So yeah, a little bit off-putting that, and you'll see that the trigger point just here is right on this left-hand edge with this graticule position here, with the cross here. So very nice, and if we go too high, of course it stops triggering, and there you go. So very nice. We quite like that. The next thing I'm going to show you is uh, something that at the time was, I'm sure, really quite remarkable. Uh, this is the single shot capability. Of course, we take it for granted on uh, DSOs uh, these days, but um, I'm sure that when people saw this, they were they were completely uh, blown over by it. So what I can do is there's got a waveform coming in, and I can take a snapshot of it. But notice as well that it actually takes several samples of it. Uh, I don't pretend that I know how this uh, how to use this properly. There's a whole bunch of uh, memory items and a, and a nice thick book. Uh, to read through and to be honest with you uh, these days it's it's probably of, of little use but uh, what you you'll see that if I actually move this uh, channel one down there was the uh, snapshot of, of the uh, waveform that it took so uh, that's uh, that's quite uh, I'm sure sort of uh, raise a few eyebrows when when that uh, that was available back in the early mid 80s certainly when I, when I was uh, around in those days I would have loved a scope like this but uh, yeah the price tag was never going to happen for me that was probably uh, in those days about uh, well more than a year's uh, salary to me okay so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to show you uh, uh, an AM signal so this is a, a 1 megahertz carrier with a 1 kilohertz um, modulating frequency at 70% uh, modulation and um, I can press the autoscope, the magical button um, I assure uh, people watching who uh, use the use scopes on a regular basis that I, I very rarely use the uh, the auto setup to be honest with you but uh, it shows you some, some of the times where it can make a mistake so what it's done here is um, in looking at the AM signal is that it's actually looked at the 1 megahertz carrier part of it and actually what I really want to look at is I want to look at the um, one it based on the one kilohertz modulating signal so um, this is why the display isn't quite what you'd expect from normally when you see an AM signal uh, in, the, in the textbooks 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if we can uh, get this triggered on this signal. And uh, first things first, uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, reduce the time base. So let's get this back to, to close to where we had it before. So if we have it say, I don't know, let's go for uh, 500 microseconds per division. And then what we're going to do is we've got to try to trigger it. Now this is this is quite tricky on this. Uh, and uh, let's see if we can we can actually get it to do what we want it to do. Amazing! I actually got it to work. Um, I've been fiddling with this and uh, didn't seem to be able to quite get it exactly the way I wanted. So now I've got that. Let's move that up. And actually, I'm going to change the volt. Actually, you'll see here if I now change the volts per division, it will almost certainly lose. Uh, there you go can't win can you so let's adjust the trigger level again see if we can get it by okay yeah so when you uh, adjust the uh, volts per division on a channel it also seems to adjust the trigger level for some obscure reason I'm not sure if that's by design or uh, or what but uh, that's what it does and then we're going to go for the uh, delayed trigger so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this uh, AM waveform then we're going to zoom into it so I'm going to switch the dual time base now, there we go, it looks like the delay time base needs adjusting, let's get that done, oops it's on fine for some obscure reason, let's get this nice and there we go, that's what we want, it's going a little bit too fast there, now let's get the separation so we can separate the two traces, come on, there we go, okie dokie. And now let's see what we can do about zooming into this. So again, let's go for the delayed trigger. And uh, if we zoom in, you'll see there we go. That's the. Let's see. Um, let's turn up the intensity a little bit. See, everything is done from this. Uh, so you can see this. You just about see it down there. The uh, second. Uh, the delayed time base, and uh, let's go back to uh, changing the delay. And you see, as we move, you'll see here there's a little uh, intensified version which moves as I adjust it. And what that is doing is it's also showing you where this is zooming in on the waveform. So you'll see it getting larger and smaller as we go through the waveform. Very nice too. And it's a bit flickery, so again we can we can turn that char on off. Uh, to be honest with you, it's a bit frustrating the flickering, but I am I've sort of started to get used to it. And there's plenty of other functions that you can do here. You can also count on a number of uh, instances of a trigger. You can of course have the uh, delayed trigger on a, on a, a either another channel or a um, an external. Uh, trigger which doesn't have to be the same as the main time base so you can have have it based on two different triggers. So I'm going to show you a little bit about cursors now so I'm back to a, a normal one kilohertz uh, sine wave signal on the uh, input of this and uh, just all set up very uh, very simple setup this is and now what I'm going to do is to show you how the cursors work on here at least try to so we have to go through a bit of a procedure here because uh, I have to store it into the uh, the waveform uh, storage area and uh, then what I can do is I have to go into the options and the uh, waveform storage and uh, then press cursor and we'll select the cursor M1 marker for control and uh, actually you can do it while this menu is on the screen but I'm just going to adjust this and you might just be able to see behind there's a little X which is moving and what I'm going to do is uh, in fact if I close this menu down there we go you might be able to see it better in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the original waveform away you'll notice I moved the original waveform and the um, the stored waveform version of it is still there there's a little, little cursor marker here but of course now I've got to go into the settings and into cursor and select uh, this one again and let's get out of here previous menu and you can see that you can actually move that around now also what you want to be able to do is to actually measure what's on there so what we're going to do here is 
again I'm a little bit slow on this but um, we want to be able to uh, have a look to see uh, what it says, oh here we go, it's at the top, not quite sure why it disappeared but as you go along you can see the actual value and the time since trigger so if we go all the way back to the beginning you'll see there you go, that's the point of trigger and it triggered at minus 40 millivolts and there you go, so you can move along and that's those are the markers for you and you can select I guess multiple markers not something I do very much, there we go, there's the other marker there and you can also find a delta time, so all this good stuff it was all there, but as you can see, perhaps not as friendly as it is nowadays so there we go, that's uh, a brief introduction to the HP 1980B and um, yeah, you can pick these up on, on eBay for um, one or two hundred uh, dollars, uh, but be aware of the shipping costs, they are, they are very heavy. I think they're about 18 kilos, which is what, about 40 pounds, something like that. So just bear that in mind, and uh, they are a beautiful machine, and I have to say, uh, I've had this for, for a couple of weeks now, I'm using it quite a lot, and uh, quite enjoying using it as well. Up to only 100 megahertz on uh, the bandwidth side, and uh, in fact the waveform storage really um, is uh, more of a, an interesting thing rather than something you'd, you'd use on a regular basis compared to DSOs these days which can perform a much better job. Um, but uh, I'm, as I say, I'm actually using, like, enjoying using it as a, as, a, as a simple cathode ray oscilloscope. 